I knew then that I definitely either had to quit my job to focus on photography or quit photography altogether and focus on my desk job. I made the less sensible choice. <laughs> I picked photography and decided to take a chance on what I loved to do. I had graduated as an architect. I was at a job that I really loved as a designer. And at the same time, I discovered photography and I loved taking pictures. And I was doing this at the same time. I would go to my job. I was there by eight. I'd be at the job all day till five. At five, I'd be leaving home to go and shoot in the evening and then editing pictures till around two or three in the morning. Sleeping three hours and starting all over the next day. And after about two years of doing that, I was so tired that I knew I had to quit one thing. In most of the jobs that I was doing then, I was shooting portraits for around 5,000 bob. And I just remember I had to shoot so many so that I could try and make a living from it. You know, the interesting thing is when I was leaving my job, I actually wasn't too sure about it. I even took a chance. I told my boss, why don't I work half the time for half the money? And she said, OK. And so I tried it out. But when I did that, it was a clear message that I needed to definitely go out on my own and just believe in myself because the two are not balancing too well. One of the things that I said is that I needed, I knew that I needed to get better. And so I needed to work at it. And I got myself onto this program that I found online called Daily Shoot. What they were doing is giving a daily assignment. I would see it and then shoot and in 24 hours, pick a good image, post it online, edit it and everything. And I did this for a few months. And what it did is that it got me in the habit of shooting every single day. There's nowhere you'd catch me without my camera. It was part of the process of getting myself to where I am now. A friend of mine took me to KICC, to the rooftop. And at that time, I didn't even know it was open to the public. I was blown away by what I saw because Nairobi looked fantastic from above. I didn't even have a camera. I remember just sitting there, just taking it all in because it was, it was so immense. And in my mind, that's not how I felt about Nairobi when I walked along on the street. I think that's one of the places and one of the views that actually changed my view about photography and changed what I think pictures can do. After a while, I went back to KCC, to the rooftop, took my camera and took pictures. When I posted them online, I started getting all these interesting comments about them. There were people who from Nairobi did not believe that that could be Nairobi. And so they said I'd photoshopped the pictures and added lights and things like that. Over time, as I kept posting these pictures, people actually started having this idea that Nairobi is a beautiful place. And that's when I knew, that's another time that I knew photography is powerful because when people can change perceptions because of what they see, that's powerful. I had like 40 followers on Twitter. That's where Instagram wasn't even there yet. And one day someone shared my, my WordPress page where I used to post my Nairobi pictures. The next day, I saw that I had 100 followers. The next day, it was 200. In about a week, I think it went to about 600 followers, which was amazing and strange at the same time. And all this was because of the Nairobi picture. Moving on from there, things just kept getting better. Over time, more people knew about my work, more people wanted to hire me to photograph, more people were interested in what I was doing. Like those, those years, once, one of the, the first year, especially the first year after quitting my job, I think in that whole year, maybe four or five months, we did not have the rent that we needed to pay. We didn't have it on time. Like we'd the landlord would be knocking on the door like at, on 5th, saying, you know, guys, we, we need the rent now, making calls. And we never had the rent till 15th. And 
this is the worst thing because you know Kenyans the problem is we don't read contracts and I remember one day the landlord saying actually we are going to be fine we need to be fining you you owe us money as fines for delaying rent and I was like what do you mean I said it's in your contract if you delay rent you have to pay us extra by 10 percent I delayed rent for five months meaning by then I think the fines were almost like another month of rent <laughs> but and strangely enough I'd like to tell you that that was the last time that happened but for the first three years every year there were three months in the middle of the year where rent always came late it was either we borrow money from some of our friends who are still who are still employed or just delayed and pay the fines or something like that but the thing that I know, the thing I remember clearly, even more than, you know, the problems of not paying rent, the thing I remember clearly is that there's none of those times that I thought maybe I should go back to an office job. It never even crossed my mind. It wasn't even an option. Yeah, and my wife just looked at me, she said, you know what? We are still alive, we are still going, so and you still have your camera, so we can still get work done, we can still do this. I remember my first camera, it was, it was really crappy. It's not even in production anymore. I think I used it for about a year, and one of the worst things about it was when I'd go online and research how to do something, something. Then I go try to do it with my camera and find that I can't. Either my skill was not there or it, the camera didn't have, I don't know. It was just a weird time, trying to learn something, trying to learn your equipment and things like that. And I was lucky that one of my friends bought a camera that was more superior. So I kind of jumped on his camera. I had to borrow his camera and use it for more than a year. And this was a year of using whatever is cheapest. Like at that time, it wasn't about buying equipment that is good. It was buying equipment that is affordable. Whatever is there and can be, a f can be, can be bought, that's what you get. But one of my large, biggest encouragement, I remember some guys who followed my work from South Africa, and this was maybe four or five years ago. And when they came, because they were location scouting in Nairobi, and so they looked at my pictures and they were trying to figure out these locations that are here, how can we access them, go and shoot from there. And so they called me for a meeting and they told me, these pictures of yours, what did you shoot them with? You must have shot them with a 5D for people who no cameras, no, that was a really high-end camera. Like maybe three or four times more expensive than what I was using. And I told them, actually, no, I used this camera. No, I told them what I used, they laughed till they sat on the floor and said, you cannot be serious. This camera can't have produced these images. And that was the first time that it hit me that really, what you're shooting on doesn't matter. And I know because so many people I meet keep asking me, what are you shooting on? Maybe that's why your pictures are this good. And I tell them, look, I've seen people do with a mobile what others cannot do with a DSLR. And if you just work on what you see, work on your eye, work on getting better, then it won't matter what equipment you use. Because at the end of the day, what you're producing will be what speaks for you and not what your camera is. I remember that one of the things I did not enjoy when I decided to go into full-time photography was shooting portraits. And I mean, it wasn't too much fun for me. And I remember I, I decided, you know what, my background is in architecture. I love architecture. I think I want to focus on architectural photography. And for me, it, it was about buildings first fascinate me. And I thought one of the things that I see least documented in Africa is our buildings. Architecture, our cities are not documented as much as they should. And so I made a decision that I'm going to focus on being an architectural photographer. And that by itself made my work a lot harder, just because the clientele for this was going to be a lot, lot narrower. But um, the thing is, I did believe in what I wanted to do. And I decided that I'm going to focus on it and market it as much as I can up to where they take notice of me as an architectural photographer. And as much as it was harder at that time, but over time it got better. Over time, people, I mean, the people that I'm trying to target started seeing the relevance of that. 
people started expecting to see you know shots of Nairobi city at night in the morning from from me and the end result of this is that now I can safely say that people in Nairobi don't expect to see a bad picture of Nairobi they've already been exposed to what Nairobi actually is and they don't expect any less and in a huge part I think that could be a result of one of the of, of the pictures that I took when I started shooting in the city for anyone who might be in in that position in that position where things don't make sense either you feel like your work is unappreciated you feel like nobody actually sees what you do or you feel like what you do doesn't matter or it doesn't make sense i think it's very natural to go through that phase and i think it's a healthy part of the process the thing to be encouraged about is that even that part passes so you find that you will have your lows and you will have your highs. And then it will be lows again and highs. And I don't think there's a constant high or a constant low. So when you're in a low place, just remember it will soon pass. And if you're in a high place, I guess remember the same thing. But if you're lucky, then the highs become enjoyable and really fun and the lows become bearable. And if you're luckier, then you have more highs than you have the lows. But at the end of the day, I think at a point then it, everything starts to make sense and you start to understand why you actually do this and it makes, it makes sense why you should keep doing it. So don't quit when you're in the low parts because that too will pass. Just stay strong and keep at it. It will all make sense even if it doesn't make sense right now.